Okay, this is um, section 1.6, part two, the demo, um, class number four. So we're gonna discuss the heartbreaking result that is Arrow's impossibility theorem. So uh, I'm gonna skip over this reviewing group activity number three because um, there's a whole video on that, on those activities that you can watch. And I wanna to move to talking about this chart. So this chart shows the four elections in US history where the winner of the popular vote did not win the electoral college and thus did not become president. Do all or any of these elections represent a violation of the majority criterion? So remember, to violate the majority criterion, someone would have to get more than half the votes but lose the election. Okay, so if we look at 2016 Clinton-Trump, so Clinton has a larger share of the popular vote than Trump, but Trump won the, won the Electoral College. So you can see blue is bigger than red, meaning more votes. But if you go over... Oops, if you look over from the top of that blue... Oh, as best I can draw a horizontal line, it is not over 50%. So Clinton did not get more than 50% of the vote, which means that this is not a violation of the majority criterion. So this one is not a violation of the majority criterion. Let's see, if any of these um, blue bars are over 50%, so that one's under 50. This one looks like it's under 50. So those two are not violations. Okay, Even though they won more first place votes than their opponent, but lost the election, these are not violations of the majority criterion. Because having won more, um, they still did not win more than half. They did not win a, a majority. However, this first time it ever happened, Tilden Hayes in 1876, Tilden did win a majority of the votes. Tilden has more than 50% of the votes, yet lost the Electoral College. So Tilden had a majority, but lost the election. So this is a violation of the majority criterion. Okay, the only time in U.S. history that a president has won a majority of the votes, not just the most popular votes, but more than half of the votes and lost in the Electoral College. So to summarize, we've seen four different methods to count the votes, plurality, borda, plurality with elimination, and pairwise comparisons, and four different criteria to decide if a vote counting method is fair the majority criterion, the Condorcet criterion, monotonicity criterion, and independence of irrelevant alternatives, also known as the dropout criterion. So make sure you understand those eight things. They're summarized um, on page nine of this packet. Um, even though some vote counting methods violate some fairness criteria, our vote counting methods don't violate all of the fairness criteria. Remember, the only way the majority criterion is violated is if there is a candidate who has a majority of first place votes but doesn't win the election. Is it possible for the plurality method to violate the majority criterion? So if someone has a majority of the first place votes, then they will most certainly have the most first place votes of any other candidate. Because if you have more than half, there are less than half remaining. So even if one candidate had all of them, it wouldn't be more than the majority candidate. So this is a no, okay? It's impossible for the plurality method to name a winner other than a majority candidate. Um, is it possible for the method of pairwise comparisons to violate the Condorcet criterion? So pairwise comparisons, that's where you match everybody up, A, B, A, C, et cetera. So if there is a candidate who wins all of their matchups, they will most definitely win more than anyone else. So again, 
no violation is possible there. So here's our complete fairness table. Violates means that the voting method violates the fairness criteria in some elections, not every election. Satisfies means that the voting method never violates the fairness criteria. So you'll see plurality is listed as satisfies the majority criterion. It will always satisfy the majority criterion. No matter what, if you have a majority candidate, they will win in the plurality method. And then the other one we just talked about was pairwise comparisons. Always satisfies the Condorcet criterion. If someone wins all their head-to-head -head matchups, they will most certainly win the most head-to-head -head matchups, so they will always win pairwise comparisons. And then this, this summarizes every criteria with every method. Does it violate or satisfy? So as you can see from the table, none of the four methods satisfy the dropout criterion, right? They all, it says violates for all of them. Is there a voting method, method out there that we could devise that satisfies the dropout criterion? Of course, we could devise one. But let's think about Arrow's impossibility theorem that says there is no voting method using preference ballots that will always satisfy all four of the fairness criterion. So if we devised a method that could satisfy the dropout criterion, it would have to violate one of the other three. So this is surprising, possibly very upsetting, that there is no perfectly fair way to conduct an election. Um, But here's a great quote about Arrow's impossibility theorem from our book. No matter how hard we try, democracy will never have a perfectly fair voting method, and the potential for unfairness is built into every election. This does not mean that every election is unfair or that every voting method is equally bad, nor does it mean that we should stop trying to improve the quality of our voting experience. We can make it better. We can minimize unfair things that happen. Um, but there will always be some level of unfairness built into voting as a mathematical fact. It does mean that we will have to accept trade-offs in choosing one election method over another. For example, we might decide that we want to pick a voting method that would eliminate tactical or insincere voting. Um, however, a system in which tactical voting is impossible, that is, you never get a better result by voting insincerely, would be desirable. However, the Gibbard Satterweight theorem says that this is basically impossible because there are only two kinds of systems that aren't vulnerable to tactical voting a dictatorship, in which there is no voting, um, and random systems, uh, anarchy, in which voting does not matter. Um, so, those are the only two systems where tactical voting is irrelevant, that aren't vulnerable to it, that doesn't mean we can't try to minimize it. Back and look at the table. Pairwise comparisons satisfies three of the four criteria. So we can still look for a system that's less vulnerable to tactical voting. Other criteria. A number of other fairness criteria have been proposed and discussed. Few are below. There's the Condorcet loser criterion. It says that if a candidate loses to every other candidate in a one-on-one -on -one race, then that candidate should not win. That's sort of like the reverse of Condorcet. The clone independence criterion. It says that if two identical candidates run in the same race, the outcome of the race should not be affected. So if a, if a clone enters the race of one of the current candidates, it sh they should not affect the outcome. And participation criterion, not voting should not help your preferred choice win. So example A, uh, an example would be a meeting that requires a quorum to vote. So this is often a rule in town meetings. Um, there may be a motion on the table, uh, that requires a vote for a decision. 
Um, but the town bylaws say that you must have a quorum, which means a certain number of people must be present in order to vote. It's usually some percentage of the population. So let's say you are really, really against this proposal. You want it to be a no. It's coming up for a vote in the town meeting and it's looking like you're gonna lose. The vote is gonna go the other way. They're gonna vote yes. So you realize that um, if you and all the other people who wanna vote no, which may only be a handful of people, if you all were to leave the meeting, there would no longer be a quorum and the town bylaws would prevent a vote from happening. So that is uh, a participation criterion where not voting, leaving the meeting would uh, help your preferred choice win because you're preventing a vote. So the participation criterion says that that should not be the case. You should not be able to get your result by not voting. Okay, some overall conclusions of our study of election methods. No voting method is perfect. Pairwise comparisons may be the, quote, fairest. If you and a number of voting methods are improvements on the plurality system, the one that we use to elect officials in the U.S. most of the time. Um, note that the mathematics of voting is a relatively new field in mathematics. Kenneth Arrow passed away in February 2017, and Condorcet is pictured below left.